Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be discussing some of the new discoveries coming from a very bizarre type of star systems discovered by the now retired Gaia telescope. The European Space Agency's telescope that essentially created some of the most accurate maps of the entire galaxy in the last decade. But in this case, a few years back, completely by accident, the telescope discovered three specific star systems that were essentially hiding black holes. And though usually astronomers rely on gamma ray or X ray telescopes to find black holes, in this case it was discovered through simple visual observations and a very strange quirk in the orbit of the star. We've actually talked about these discoveries a couple of years back and you can find the videos in the description. But today we're going to discuss some of the most recent discoveries about one of the stars because something here just doesn't add up. But I guess first let's discuss some of the important details and talk about these three star systems as well. And first of all, let's talk about Gaia. Now Gaia's job was to map billions of stars by precisely measuring their position and their motion. And it did so by using the technique referred to as astrometry. Here's roughly how this works. Basically by looking at a very distant star and by observing tiny deviations in orbit, it then becomes possible to measure exactly how the star is moving and to even discover if there's something in orbit around the star or even if the star itself is orbiting something else. And that's because here both objects are going to be pulling on each other, producing tiny deviations. And so in doing so, it actually discovered quite a lot of really mysterious objects. And specifically some of the closest black holes to us that were essentially dormant. They were not producing any emissions, but they had a partner that they were pulling on, which made the stars wobble in a very strange way. And so among several such objects, there was one system known as Gaia BH2, the system you can kind of see right here, that presented astronomers with a somewhat unusual mystery. A contradictory story that only makes sense when you consider some kind of a very violent secret past. Something we're going to discuss in a couple of minutes. As a matter of fact, now astronomers kind of suggest that technically the star should not even exist. But obviously this was not the only such object. Here Gaia discovered Gaia BH1, BH2 and BH3, which was actually strangely massive. And all three objects were discovered because the stars, as you can see right here, were just moving way too much but they did not have any visible partner, implying that the partner has to be a black hole. And here's roughly what all of this looks like if we dramatically accelerate everything. And so this was actually the first time in history that scientists discovered dormant black holes by using this astrometry technique. This has never been done before. And once again, this was not just one black hole, it was three, with one of them being the closest to the solar system. Once again, the video should be in the description. And so for Gaia BH2, the black hole was estimated to be about 8.94 solar masses, or just under 9 times the mass of the Sun, with the immense gravitational pull causing the visible companion to wobble as it orbits. In comparison, Gaia BH1 was orbiting a Sun-like star, and even today is the closest black hole to us at approximately 1500 light years, whereas Gaia BH3 discovered more recently, seems to have a black hole of 32.7 solar masses, which is considered to be unusually large and is also kind of difficult to explain. This actually makes it the heaviest known stellar mass black hole in the entire galaxy, with the companion star in this case also being a somewhat primitive giant star. But the main focus, Gaia BH2, is somewhere in the middle, 3800 light years away from us, and has a red giant very similar to Betelgeuse as a partner. And it's really this red giant that's really mysterious, not the black hole. And so here in this study, researchers from University of Hawaii conducted a very thorough investigation of the star and made some really unusual discoveries. First, the chemistry of the star suggests that it's essentially alpha rich. It means that it seems to contain a lot of heavier elements, and specifically alpha elements, which are normally found in a lot of ancient stars. And so based on the chemical investigation, this star should have formed when the universe was pretty young, placing its expected age at approximately 10 billion years. And it actually resembles a lot of other ancient stars we've seen in the Milky Way, and so in that sense, it's not that unusual. But this is of course not the only information we have. The real breakthrough, or the real mystery, came when astronomers used a completely different tool to look beneath the star's surface. Here they used asteroseismology. And as I mentioned, this is essentially kind of like listening to the music of the star. 
And so essentially, just like the seismology effects on Earth when we listen to different earthquakes, here something very similar can be done by listening to the vibration on the stellar surface. And so this is a study of oscillations in stars. And by listening to these vibrations or star quakes, which are usually visible through changes in the frequency of light coming from the star, scientists can then start making conclusions about what's happening inside a star and even work out its structure and a lot of additional properties. And so just like the waves from earthquakes that tell us about the planetary layers, for stars a lot of these slight pulsations usually cause the star's brightness to flicker just a little bit. And that's because star quakes, just like earthquakes, are essentially sound waves. And that's why it's actually called the music of the star. But the path these sound waves usually take depends entirely on the local speed of sound, which does change based on the star's temperature and, of course, its chemical composition. And so by knowing the velocity changes inside the star, it then becomes possible to figure out what seems to be happening underneath the surface. I think this image right here kind of presents it the best. And this is particularly important for studying the core of the star and the star's density, which would be otherwise impossible to know. And by the way, all of these studies are basically based on the studies of the Sun and planet Earth. And so by studying Earth seismology and then applying it to the helio seismology, which is the music from the Sun, we can use very similar observations on other stars to start making conclusions. And so for many of these stars, we have super accurate data from missions like TESS, TESS satellite actually measured a lot of stars using very high precision observations, and in this case it of course includes this star as well. And so in essence that's what they did for this red giant, in the process discovering something that doesn't add up. The measurements of the star's core properties, which was actually really precise and involved a lot of additional observations, suggested that the star should be approximately 5 billion years old, which of course really didn't make sense because the star's chemistry is much, much older, putting it at at least 10 billion years. And so something here must have happened to the star in order to make it the way it is. And the main author of the study, Daniel Hay, suggests that there's a chance that it did not evolve in isolation. We'll come back to this in a second, just to explain everything. But further clues were also discovered by observing the star's rotation using ground-based telescopes, because red giants, like most stars, usually slow down significantly as they age. And so older stars will actually spin slower and lose their angular momentum. And a typical isolated red giant of this supposed age should be spinning pretty slowly. But not this star. It seems to spin once every 398 days, which is far faster than expected. And so this suggests that something seems to have spun up the star, making it spin faster over time. And while well, the only conclusion we have is stellar violence. The only way to explain why the star seems to be both young and old, and why it seems to spin so fast, is that it seems to have underwent a significant interaction with the companion star in the past. Very likely the same companion that eventually became the black hole. And specifically this was either some kind of a merger or an accretion event. It very likely injected a lot of mass into this star, which is why it appears younger, and very likely dramatically increased its angular momentum, causing it to spin much faster. And well, there's at least one evidence for this when comparing the rotation of the star with the orbital period of the black hole. The star's measured rotation of 398 days is extremely close to the period of 428 days of the orbit of the black hole. And this basically suggests some kind of a tidal forcing or some kind of a tidal interaction, with the ancient star that became a black hole very likely responsible for all of this. And for astronomers this is an exciting discovery because this is now a completely new type of a star nobody knew existed. A young alpha enhanced red giant that seems to be the result of a merger or an accretion event where a huge amount of mass was transferred from one star to the other, making the star appear entirely different. But this particular study also took a look at the other unusual star or the other unusual black hole, Gaia BH3. And while astroseismology worked for the first star, it didn't really work as well for the second one. And while technically in this system, because this is also a metal poor giant star, it should be showing a lot of clear oscillations. But when scientists looked at the star, they actually found practically nothing. With this non-detection also presenting us with vital information. It looks like our data and our theories about metal poor stars is probably not correct. Basically the models for these stars is maybe not complete, and some of these stars do not oscillate as we expected them to. 
or essentially astroseismology may not work for all of the stars, even though scientists thought it would. But the discoveries from these stars are still pretty exciting because here it essentially underscores the importance of these techniques and the incredible power of astroseismology in helping us analyze extremely distant objects. And especially in helping us discover a lot of these very bizarre systems where things seem to be very different from what scientists originally expected. And so right now we have a lot of strong evidence to suggest that in many of these binary systems containing black holes, the remaining partner very likely goes through some ridiculous changes and very complex and dramatic stellar interactions. Something that previously was not accounted for. But it's also quite likely that future test observations will provide us with even more data uncovering new mysteries about these three bizarre stars. And of course uncovering other stars that seem to have their own mysteries too. Ultimately though, this will definitely help us unravel formation mechanisms around the Milky Way and help us understand what sort of black holes are hiding in the Milky Way galaxy. Right now only three dormant black holes have been discovered, but chances are researchers might find even more, helping us figure out how stars evolve across the galaxy. Anyway, we'll definitely come back and discuss this more in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM me directly, or by joining the channel membership that grants you early access. You can also support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.